الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد Tonight is the 23rd night as uh, we are all aware and the name that I have chosen is very important for this and for every single odd night and that is the name of Allah that our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam commanded us to use on the odd nights and that is the name Al-Afu that is the name Al-Afu <coughs> excuse me the name Al-Afu Al-Afu is mentioned <coughs> in the Quran and Sunnah and it occurs both as a proper noun and as a verb and the verb Afa means to erase to the point that no trace is left to erase so that no trace is left so the Arabs would say that the wind Afa the footsteps in the desert so when the person is walking in the desert they leaves footsteps the wind Afa the wind blows away the footsteps. You know the soft desert sand when you're walking, after a few footsteps you look back and you see nothing. The wind literally erases it away. So Al-Afu is the one who by his nature overlooks the sin. By his nature he neglects the sin. In other words, he doesn't even take into account that the sin occurred. So Al-Afu in one sense is more powerful than Al-Ghafur. Because Al-Ghafoor means to cover the sin up. Al-Ghafoor means that you have blocked the effects of the sin. Al-Afu means the sin never took place. You literally wiped the slate clean. This is what Al-Afu means. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the name Al-Afu five times in the Quran. And as for the verb, it occurs almost a dozen times. And it is typically used for very major sins that Allah Azza wa Jalla says, He has Afu, He has forgiven them. So for example, when the Bani Israel worshipped a calf besides Allah, they took a false god. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, ijla. They took the calf, We overlooked and neglected the fact that they worshipped a calf besides us. The worst sin imaginable. As we know, the children of Israel, they were saved from Fir'aun. They saw the Dead Sea split in front of them. They crossed over to safety. And then they demanded a false god. And they worshipped the heifer, the calf. And Allah Azza wa Jal says, even though you saw the signs and you worshipped the God, we were the ones afawna an thalik. We were the ones neglected and ignored that and we continue to bless you. So Al-Afu overlooks the biggest of all sins. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that of his nature, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَيَعْفُوا عَنْ كَثِيرٌ that Allah forgives much, and I use the word forgive because there is no English equivalent of afu. I'm translating it as the same as I translate maghfira. Even though afu is not maghfira. Afu means to wipe away. And Allah says, وَيَعْفُوا عَنْ كَثِيرٌ Allah wipes away most of your sins. He neglects and ignores them. Because if Allah did not neglect and ignore them, then we would have no chance of survival. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us that our that his afu upon us necessitates our thanks. Allah says, ثُمَّ عَفَوْنَا عَنْكُمْ مِنْ بَعْدِ ذَلِكَ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ then we wiped away your sins. Even though you did it, we wiped it away so that you could show thanks to us. So the fact that Allah ignores and neglects our sins, wipes them away, brings about a discussion of our thankfulness to Him. And of course, the verb occurs, as we said many times in the Quran, perhaps one of the most famous times is at the end of Surah Al-Baqarah. Is at the end of Surah Al-Baqarah that we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that wa'fu anna waghfir lana warhamna anta mawlana fansurna ala al-qawm al-kafirin. Those two verses that our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam reminded us were sent down from under the throne of Allah. They were revealed from under the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Some of the most powerful verses in the Quran and we ask Allah wa'fu anna waghfir lana warhamna anta mawlana. You are our mawla and protector. So help us against those who have rejected you. So why do we say wa'fu anna waghfir lana warhamna? What's the uh, the nuance of each one of them? So uh, uh, At-Tabari quotes some of the famous scholars of tafsir by saying wa'fu anna oh Allah if we fail to do what we're supposed to do. Waghfir lana if we do what we're not supposed to do. Warhamna because no matter how much we do we will not earn your jannah. So, wa'fu anna, when we don't do what we're supposed to do. 
وَغْفِرْ لَنَا When we do what we're not supposed to do. وَرْحَمْنَا Because no matter what we don't do or do, we will not earn your Jannah without your Rahmah. So we need your Rahmah to push us along and to get us where we need to go. So we ask Allah for Afu and for Maghfirah and for Rahmah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves this attribute. And that is why especially tonight we should be reminded of this attribute. Because when it was the last odd nights of Laylatul, of, uh, of the night of Ramadan, and Aisha was worshipping Allah, and she saw the Prophet sallallahu also worshipping. So she said, Ya Rasulullah, what should I say if tonight happens to be Laylatul Qadr? What is the dua I should say if this should be Laylatul Qadr? And we all know what answer he gave. Because we say it every single night in our uh, qiyam and our witr and our dua and she, he said to his beloved wife that say to Allah Allahumma innaka afuun kareemun tuhibbul afwa fa'fu anna this is the dua that we should especially be saying on these odd nights of the last 10 nights of Ramadan. Oh Allah, you are the afu and you are the generous and you love to erase sins tuhibbul afu therefore erase our sins and so Allah Azza wa Jal loves to practice afu and He loves those who practice afu themselves. Allah loves afu and He loves those amongst us who practice afu. How do we gain Allah's afu? By practicing afu in our own daily lives. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us in Surah Ash-Shura, فَمَنْ عَفَى وَأَصْلَحَ فَأَجْرُهُ عَلَى اللَّهِ Allah talks about people who bring dhulm to one another. Then Allah says, but if somebody has done dhulm to you, you faman afa wa aslaha. You should try your best to forgive and forget and mend the bonds. Wa aslaha. He's broken ties, you try your best to mend ties. فَأَجْرُهُ عَلَى اللَّهِ Whoever does that, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give him his reward. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us to respond with evil, with afu, by erasing that evil from our hearts. And Allah mentions in the Quran, وَأَن تَعْفُوا أَقْرَبُ لِلتَّقْوَى If you can forgive the wrong that is done to you, if you just wipe it out from your heart, and how difficult is that? You know we are taught as children that I'll forgive but I won't. Forget, this is not afu. This is maghfira. To be brutal, this is maghfira. Maghfira means, I'll protect you from the consequences of your actions. Right? Maghfira is good. It's not bad. But higher than that, I shall forgive and I'll pretend it never happened. That is what afu is. That's the height. And that is what Allah mentions in the Quran. وَأَن تَعْفُوا أَقْرَبُ taqwa. If you can wipe it out of your heart, somebody's done a wrong to you, then that is the gist of taqwa. Aqrabu li taqwa translates the essence of taqwa. It doesn't translate closer to taqwa as some people translate. Aqrabu li taqwa, that is the gist of taqwa. That is the pinnacle of taqwa. To be able to wipe out the wrongs that people do to you from your heart. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us especially who are the people we should practice afu with the most? Our loved ones, our children, our spouses. Allah says in the Quran, إِنَّ مِنْ أَزْوَاجِكُمْ وَأُولَادِكُمْ عَدُوًّا لَكُمْ فَاحْذَرُوهُمْ That some of your spouses and children, they are enemies to you. Pause here. A lot of people misunderstand. What does it mean enemies? And the Mufassirun explain. By enemies it means it is possible you will be diverted from the worship of Allah and your priorities because of them. Because the number one distraction in the dunya is children and family. And many times we will do haram to please them. Many times we will earn haram money to please them. Many times we will not pray because we think we're doing something to please our children. So Allah says, be careful. Sometimes, in namin, sometimes your own families can become your enemies. Without even you knowing it, you have made them your enemies because they're dragging you down and harming you. So then what does Allah say? If you realize that's happening, right? Don't take it out on them. Don't take it out on them. وَإِن تَعْفُوا وَتَصْفَحُوا وَتَغْفِرُوا فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ غَفُورٌ رَّحِيمٌ You have to erase. So for example, realistic example that maybe your children, your spouse is asking something that is not the best thing Islamically. Right? Not the best thing. They want something that you might have to earn haram ways or it will distract you from something. So don't take it out on them. Because it's your job, you're being tempted by them, that's true. But your anger should not be taken out on them. This is your temptation. 
وَإِن تَعْفُوا وَتَصْفَحُوا وَتَغْفِرُوا If you can erase from your heart the anger that you have. وَتَصْفَحُوا Turn over a new leaf. Ignore. Start on a new page. وَتَغْفِرُوا And don't make that what they have attempted to do a, a means to harm them later on. No, because in the end of the day, as we know, we work together to strive to achieve Allah's pleasure. So Allah commands us to practice afu when it comes to our wives and our children. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran, in tubdu khayran aw tukhfu, uh, 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 in tubdu khayran aw ta'fu an su'in, fa inna Allah kana afu wa qadira. That in tubdu khayran aw tukhfuhu aw ta'fu an su. If you demonstrate your charity or you give it secretly or you forgive, Three things Allah mentions. If you do something great, or you do it in secret, or you forgive somebody, whatever you do, then Allah is afu and qadir. These are three avenues of, of coming close to Allah. Doing something publicly, like giving charity. Doing something privately, like praying in your home. Or forgiving someone. These are three things. And Allah says, whatever you do, then Allah is afu and qadir. And one of the most powerful verses, and I wish I could go into this in a tangent, but again, time is always of the essence here. The beautiful, beautiful, beautiful story of the slander of Aisha. It's a painful story. It's an emotional story. Perhaps one of the most emotional stories of the whole seerah is the slander of Aisha. I spent, if I'm not mistaken, four or five lectures on the slander of Aisha. And one issue was that the... One of the people who slandered Aisha was a second cousin of hers and a cousin of Abu Bakr as well. And Abu Bakr radiallahu an would be giving sadaqah, charity, because he was a poor person. And when he found out that his own cousin, second cousin, was slandering Aisha, he said, Wallahi, I'm never going to pay a single penny to this man as long as I live. I mean, after all, this is my daughter. Who are you to slander her? And then on top of that, you're forgetting that I'm paying you. I'm helping you out. I'm never going to give you a penny as long as I live. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed in Surah Al-Ahzab, Surah Al-Nur, excuse me. Let not the people whom Allah has blessed with fadl and with money. Abu Bakr is sahib al-fadl. Abu Bakr is a great person. Abu Bakr is not an average. Allah has blessed you. Don't put yourself down to his level. You are sahib al-fadl and you are sahib of wealth. Allah has given you some money. Don't swear by Allah that you're never going to give charity to somebody, right? Subhanallah. Abu Bakr is told, erase this from your heart. Look at the context of Afu. I'll be honest with you, I don't think I could, I'm pretty sure I could not reach that level. Yani somebody speaks about your beloved in this manner, and you have fadl over him. And Allah says, وَالْيَعْفُ Erase it from your heart, as if he never did it. Just wipe it out. وَالْيَصْفَحُ Turn over a new leaf. That happened in the past. Now move on. And then Allah says to Abu Bakr, and through Abu Bakr to all of us, Ala tuhibbuna an yaghfir Allahu lakum. Don't you want Allah to forgive you? By you forgiving this person, don't you want Allah to forgive you? So Allah uses afu here to remind us of who He is, and He wants us to practice afu as well. Wa murbil that the Prophet ﷺ is commanded. Khudil afwa wa murbil urfi wa adil anil jahilin. This is a command in the Quran to the Prophet ﷺ. Khudil afu. I command you to take afu as your as your basic methodology. Khudil afu. Practice afu, right? And command what is best and turn away from the ignorant people. And it is mentioned in the books of Tafsir that when Jibreel came with this verse, the Prophet himself said, Oh Jibreel, what does this mean? And Jibreel said, Allah is commanding you to practice afu on those who do dhulm to you, and to give to those who take away from you, and to connect to those who cut off from you. So this is the name of Allah, Al Afu. He loves to practice afu and he loves for us to practice afu. And when we practice afu, then Allah Himself loves us for practicing afu. And Allah mentions in the Quran, He is the one who accepts our repentance and He wipes away our sins even though he knows what you are doing. So Allah Azza wa Jal is al-Afu, and he loves to practice Afu. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Afu, to practice Afu on us, and to wipe away our sins. And we will inshallah continue tomorrow. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.